Hello and welcome to Wilson Center Now, a production of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. I'm John Molesky. Our guest today is Rigobert Manani. Father Manani is a Southern Voices Network for Peacebuilding scholar with the Wilson Center's Africa program and is research director at the Center for the Study of Social Action in the Democratic Republic of Congo. He joins us to discuss his Wilson Center project, Peacebuilding in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Revisiting the Toolkit. Father Manani, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Tell us first about the Center for the Study of Social Action, which has a much more elegant French name that I couldn't pronounce well, so I did the translation. Yeah. What is the center and what does it do? Yeah, in French it is uh, uh, le Centre pour l'action, uh, pour l'étude de l'action sociale, that meaning a center for studies and uh, social action. That's the name, and it's, uh, it's one of the oldest centers in Africa. It was created in 1961, uh, and uh, its objective it was to accompany the young country, the Congo was independent in uh, uh, 60, mm -hmm. so in 61, it was created to help the new country to reflect on social matters and uh, to help uh, develop some tools for good governance. It was founded by Jesuit priests? It was founded by Jesuit priests, yes. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for that. Now, let's talk about the situation uh, in the Congo that uh, needs this toolkit. Could you first explain uh, what the, the source of the violence is and why it's been unresponsive to current efforts? Yeah, um, it's good to know that we, we the Congo went in, uh, in these last years, from 96, we had a number of wars. Uh, so in 96, it was the first one. In 98, it was the second one. And uh, from 2003, it, it became a kind of not very conventional war, but with many uh, deaths and casualties. Uh, the UN was sent to Congo uh, to help the country to build the its army, that was the first objective, and then to build the kind of governance and uh, uh, democracy, uh, and then to protect local population, to help uh, uh, fighting uh, uh, militias and armed groups in the country. So uh, today, after 20 years, more than 20 years, we should, we should say, uh, the situation is very, very bad. Every day, uh, people are dying. Well, why? Th what does this tell us about the effectiveness of UN peacekeeping troops? So uh, UN peacekeeping has been efficient at the beginning, uh, but in my view, they didn't adapt themselves to the changing situation. Mm -hmm. When it was uh, time to, uh, to uh, monitor the withdrawal of foreign troops, because the war in Congo was mostly the war of others in Congo. It was Ru the war of Rwanda and Burundi and Uganda in Congo, following their own people. And then uh, they spoiled everything and created, helped to create many militias and armed groups on, on, on the country. Uh, so uh, uh, when it became like that, when it became a, a kind of non-state actors uh, acting on the ground, I think the, the, the UN lost its own uh, uh, um, way of addressing the issues. So, and then from that time, uh, the war never started, no, never stopped. And who do you negotiate with when there are all these various players, many of them non-state? Yeah, you, 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 you have a number of negotiations that was uh, organized. The first one, it was uh, between the government of Congo with the neighbor's countries. This, it, it reached the point where uh, a foreign troop had to withdraw. That was a success because then people went out. And then uh, because uh, behind the world, there were all the question of also of looting natural resources. Congo is one of the most richest uh, uh, in uh, uh, minings in, in that regions. And so the countries take advantage of that of coming and uh, 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 loot the natural resources. So when they were obliged to, to withdraw from Congo, they create other mechanisms. And this mechanism it is to create militias and armed groups. So, uh, uh, so m but many of the, the agreement, many of the peace, uh, peace talk were only addressing the groups inside the, inside the Congo and not addressing those sponsoring them. So this is one of the most uh, uh, failure of uh, the UN itself. What about the, beyond the UN, other third party players, uh, other countries, uh, do, do they play a positive role or do they make matters worse? No, but the countries, uh, 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 the, those who are uh, sponsoring the uh, militias, they are, they are those who to blame. But we have also the government of Congo that was support to build its own army. Until now, they didn't, they didn't achieve the, uh, the goal. So we still have a very weak army. We still have a, a militia, or more than 100 militias, especially in the eastern part of the Congo, and, uh, and a democracy that doesn't work. 
Is there an attempt to build an army or build that capacity? Yes, there is a process that has started from the beginning and that is not achieved yet. And there's something that has, it has to be sustained, something that you have to uh, reinforce, and uh, it's something that you need a big support. Uh, uh, and the UN has had one of the mission to, to help Congo to build the army. So they have also to rethink this kind of uh, this, uh, approach to help Congo to truly build the army. Is most of the, the foreign aid come, coming through the UN? Uh, no, uh, we, ha we still have some uh, uh, cooperation with the uh, uh, European Union, uh, the US, uh, uh, but the main actors, main international actors, represented there by the representative of the Secretary General of the UN is, uh, is from the, the MONUSCO, so the, the, the mission of the United Nations. So they play a very important role for the country. So tell us about what you've been working on in terms of this toolkit. What are some of the elements of it that you think would be really applicable and useful moving forward? For me, uh, my, my research was focused, the, 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 the basic question I tried to understand is why so many peace agreements didn't succeed. That was what I addressed. And I point out a number of things that uh, uh, the UN didn't do. One of them is the fact that they've, uh, uh, they didn't uh, build on local initiatives, local knowledge of the problem. Uh, but most of, one of the, the big problem for me is the fact that for all this time, they never want to touch the regional aspect of the war. And the, the, the regional aspect of the war, it was at the beginning of the war, it's something that is continuing. And no one uh, 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 is addressing this. And if they don't address the regional aspect of the war, and especially the question of the looting of natural resources, it is impossible to finish the war in the Congo. And who, what are the key, when you talk about regional aspects and not focusing just on DRC, wh what are the countries that the UN really needs to engage with? First is Rwanda. It's good to know that Rwanda, uh, uh, do, after his, his, uh, the genocide, more than two million of, of refugees came to Congo. Uh, we still have, according to the UN, f more than 400,000 people on the ground. And it's good to know that Rwanda, when the Rwandese came, they came with their own army because they lost the war in their own country mm -hmm. and crossed Congo with their own army. So these people are still there, active. The only one initiative they are trying to do it is try to, to win them by force. It, it has failed till now. So, uh, and this is one of the, the, the group. For from the Uganda side, you have the ADF, NALU. So it is a armed group that has lost also war in Uganda and that is in Congo. And the only one solution that they're trying to apply it is to win it. And they never win it for now, now more than 20, 20 years. Uh, and then behind all that, the question of the economic interest of these two countries on the eastern part of Congo never been truly addressed. So uh, for me, addressing only, uh, focusing only effort on the Congo government and the Congolese uh, country, it is, uh, it is not enough. What, what about the infrastructure beyond the government? Civil society, the kind of institute that you work with, is there enough infrastructure in place to be part of a solution? Yeah, we, there is, a, uh, I should say that there, there, there is a, a, a very big, very strong commitment from civil society. There is very strong commitment from the churches. Uh, there is very strong commit, uh, commitment for, from, from other, other uh, uh, structures. But when the main strike doesn't work, if, when the government itself is not very uh, uh, solid enough, when uh, the, the region itself is shaking all the time, uh, civil society cannot do much. Yeah, it has to help it be solved from all directions. So how will you share your findings? So I will publish, uh, I think, a uh, document here. I'll, I'll publish my research here, and I will have a public event uh, here in Washington. And then when you, when you go back home, is there a plan to follow through on some of the recommendations? Yes, we are working a, lo a lot on that, but we have many agencies in Congo. So one of them is democracy. So to try to build uh, a democracy in Congo, it's one of the, uh, my tasks uh, in the, my center. And uh, tell us about your time in D.C. and your relationship with the Southern Voices Network. Has that been useful to your work? Yes, of course, because uh, it g g gave me the possibility of, first of all, try to understand how the policy in the U.S. works. Uh, most of the time in Congo, we address, we think that everything is done by the State Department. Mm -hmm. now I, have, I have understood that there is many other uh, uh, powers around. So you, you have uh, 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 the Congress, the South Commission for Africa, you have... Uh, the people in the White House, you have people on the on, uh, 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 National Council of Security, something like that. So you have, there are many people. And uh, uh, I think to help U.S. to understand the situation in Congo, someone have to lobby and talk to all these groups. 
to make sure that they have the good understanding because the voice of U.S. matters in Congo. Well, Father Manani, thank you very much for joining us today and for your good work. I know you're up against it. It's a hard problem to solve, but it's good to have good people on the job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this edition of Wilson Center Now. Now join us again. We'll have a, a series coming up in the next couple of days and weeks featuring some of other, our other Southern Voices Network Africa scholars. So join us again soon. Until then, for all of us at the Wilson Center, I'm John Molesky. Thanks for joining us.